Are you the recording angel, sir? Gracious, no, but I'm from the department. Where am I going? Back down there, temporarily. But what on earth? I mean, what can I do down there? Good. Oh, but how? I leave that to your discretion, if any. Mind the wires. Thank you. Every day you will keep a note of your activities. You will submit it to me when you return. The department will then decide about your future. Yes, sir. Where is this? A part of London, England. It's called the Angel, appropriately enough. Oh, yes, I remember. I never knew how it got its name. Well, there is a legend that an angel paid it a visit a thousand years ago, but we've no official record of it. It must be fun to create a legend. No doubt. Look out. Now, here are some of the people you'll be concerned with. There's Jenny Lane on her way to work. And there's her father, Detective Sergeant Lane. Later on, you'll meet Mr. Webman and his assistant, Len Burrows. The rest is up to you. Goodbye. Goodbye. But, sir, what do I use for money? Oh, he's gone. Ah, that must be Len. Good morning, Jenny. Jenny? Jenny, I was wondering... Uh, would you like to come for a dance with me tonight? Oh, sorry, Len, I'm already going with someone. If you'd asked me before. Uh, it's all right. Oh, come on, Jenny. <laughs> Seven shillings, Mr. Meek. You know that's all you ever get on Rudolph. Perhaps I'd better take him somewhere else. Well, maybe that's not a bad idea. Why not try the Natural History Museum? Oh, it must be nice to have a sense of humor. Oh, very well. Uh, good morning, Arthur. Morning, Joshua. Nice of you to look in. Len, give Mr. Meek his usual money. Right on, Gav. Come in, Arthur. Here. Seven shillings, wasn't it, Mr. Meek? Yes. No? What's worrying you this time? It's my musical boxes. I don't like the idea that it will be sold up after I'm dead. Now, I don't like it at all. Now, Josh, we went into all this last time before I made up your will. Listen, Arthur, I paid a lot of money for some of these. I don't want that anybody should buy them cheap just because I'm dead. So? So I think the best thing will be I leave the whole lot to my nephew, George. But, Josh, what's the point? You told me that he couldn't care that much about them. What will he do? He'll only sell them? Uh, no, he won't. I'll make it in the will so he can't sell them. You mean you'll entail them? That's it. I leave them to him to the third and fourth generation. His son won't be able to sell them. His grandson won't be able to all sell right, them. All right, all right. So your nephew sells them or your nephew's great-grandson sells them. What difference does it make? You won't be here to worry about it. Morning, Len. Good morning, Sergeant Lane. There's a weekly list of stuff that's been pinched. I wish someone would come in and try and pawn something that's been stolen. Might liven things up a bit. Well, you want to keep your eyes open. We're looking for a confidence man that's been working North London. You never know. One of these days you may find yourself face to face with him. Some hope. Nothing ever happens here. <laughs> Give my regards to Mr. Webman. Cheers, bye, Sergeant. Cheer up. Good morning. Good morning, miss. I understand I can get some money here. Uh, uh, yes. Well, that is if you've got anything to pop. Pop? Yeah, you know, uh, pop. Uh, something to leave as security for a loan. Oh, I see. Well, there's my heart. Would that do? Well, I don't know. Wait a minute. I think I'd better get the gov. Mr. Webman. Mr. Webman. What is it? There's a new customer into the shop. I think you ought to see her. Well, can't you see I'm busy? I think you ought to see her, gov. She's not like our usual lot. She wants to pledge a harp. 
Hot? Mm, right. Now come. What do I want with hops? I can't have my shop cluttered up with hops. Good morning, miss. You want to raise a loan? Please. You got a piece of jewelry or something? No, but there's my harp. Sorry. On the harp, I can't allow nothing. I have nothing else. Oh, dear, what shall I do? I must have some money. It's so important, isn't it? How much did you want? Only 20 pounds. Huh? Only 20 pounds, she says. I promise I'll pay you back on Saturday. Sorry. Now, if you had a brooch or a ring... I told you I have nothing except my heart. Look, why don't you take this round to the music shop? They might give you a few pounds for it. I couldn't possibly sell it. Please help me. I've only just arrived in London. I, I haven't got a penny. Didn't you bring any money with you, miss? They don't worry much about money where I come from. Besides, I left in rather a hurry. I can't take the risk. What do I know about harps? They're not my line. Don't you like harp music? Sometimes I do, sometimes I don't. But you do like music? Yes. I'll play you something then. But you don't get around me that way. Oh. <laughs> oh. <laughs> no, no, you shouldn't get upset. Indeed. I'll always remember you as one of the kindest people I've ever known. And one day I'll repay you. You'll repay me on Saturday. Oh, the money, yes, of course. Then give a ticket. Yes, Cap. Good day to you. Bye. There's a dance this evening at the youth club I belong to. Would you come with me? I'd love to, Len. Crumbs. That'd be smashing. I'll call for you about seven, okay? Okay. Oh, I don't know where I'll be. Oh, you could call for me at my place. I think that's an excellent idea. Oh. Well, it's quite near here. It's 35 Shearford Road. It's the basement flat. Go down the steps. Down the steps. Well, I'll meet you there at seven. Oh, I must fly. Goodbye. Uh, goodbye, miss.
Hey, miss. Miss? Miss, your ticket. I told you who I I don't know what came over me, Ned. I gave her 20 pounds for it. 20 pounds. Perhaps you'll give me one and twopence, please, Mr. Webman. Well, it's a strange story, Josh. The strangest I've heard for a long time. You know, it reminds me of my brother, Paddy. He came home one night and he told us that he'd seen the fairies playing football on the parapet of Galway Bridge. Perhaps he'd been drinking potteen or whatever you call it. No, that's the extraordinary. He never touches a drop, Sally. Anyway, it's potteen. But, but he saw these little fellas kicking goals, dressed in long green velvet trousers and yellow football boots, just as clearly as I see you now. Clearer, I hope, Mr. Sullivan. Pardon me, buddy and gents, but uh, one of you oblige me with the light. Uh, certainly, sir, certainly. Yeah. Thank you. Well, there's an extraordinary thing. That's one of our ties. Yes, it's from our Dublin factory. I, uh, I travel in them, you know. That makes two things we have in common. Oh, how's that? I'm a traveler, too. Uh, Parker's the name. Oh, I'm glad to know you, Mr. Parker. Musical instruments. My firm buy them up secondhand and recondition them. Oh, you ought to call on Mr. Webman here sometime. He's got quite a few old instruments to well, sell. I have a harp. Oh, I expect his prices to be too high for me. This harp has a very beautiful... I don't talk. buy much from dealers. They know too much about values. Would you like to see the harp? See it? Who wants to see harps? There's only about 200 people in the whole of Britain who could play them. And you can't get the music for them. It was all printed in Germany. And during the war, the plates were all melted down to make tanks. Harps, a dead loss, old man. And I wouldn't touch them. Jiminy, is that the time I've got to go? Tell you what, I'll pop in someday and have a look at your other stuff. Cheerio. Be good. Bye. Twenty pounds. <laughs> <laughs> Your new suit. Do you like it, Mum? It looks so smart, I hardly recognised you. It was nice of you to put it on to show me. Oh, glad you like it. Well, eat yourself a while, it's hot. Mind your suit. Uh, Mum, I... Uh... Oh. Good evening, Mavis. I thought I'd just drop in to show you this wreath. Isn't it beautiful? <laughs> oh, I have had a hard day. But I can tell you one thing. The funeral tomorrow is going to be the best I've ever done. And there's to be six cars for the mourners, and I've arranged with the vicar for a full choral service. But, my dear, it was a shocking accident. Simply shocking. Yet the relatives wanted an embalmment. Of course, I persuaded them against it. I had to. I mean to say, you can't laugh away a lorry. Oh, hello, Len. Evening, Mrs. Trapp. I'm awfully sorry, Mum. I can't eat any more. Oh, Len. Just look at all that beautiful meat wasted. So I've got to go out in a minute. Going out? You never told me. Oh, I didn't know myself until this morning. Disgraceful, I call it. Your mother cooks and slaves for you all day, wearing herself to the bone to make a home for you, and off you go leaving her alone just when she wants you. Dear, perhaps I ought to give up this place and get a room for myself oh, somewhere. Well, there's no mum's Then what go... would you do, my lad? You mark my words, he'll be just like his father. Up and off without so much as a thank you. All right, all right, forget it. I won't go to the dance. I don't suppose the girl I've asked to turn up anyway. On second thoughts, I am going. Where's Old Faithful tonight, Jenny? Is he here? If Len does turn up, I must give him one dance. Don't mind, do you, Reg? Okay by me, babe. That's quite a dish. will be the Paul Jones. Girls on the inside, boys on the outside. Shall we dance? Oh, I don't think you'd enjoy this. You're likely to find yourself dancing with anybody. I'd love that. All right. <laughs>
that dark girl. Oh, that's Jenny. She's very pretty. Oh, sorry. The floor is rather slippery, isn't it? <laughs> Good night, Mr. Good night, Mr. I'm sorry. Whatever for? For kissing you like that. Don't you like being kissed? I do. Well, yes. Well, then what are you worrying about? Are you in love with me? Yes, of course. Crumbs. Don't look so worried. I love everybody. Dear sir, I've made a start with Len and Jenny, but they don't seem to know that they're in love. Which makes it a bit awkward. Now, ah, who's next? Ah, yes, Sergeant Lane. I must have a look at him. Anyone home? Be with you in a moment. Oh, you look tired. Had a bad day. Blast those people. <laughs> you can't really blame them. They make enough noise when they feel like it. Not everyone appreciates your playing, dear. Hmm. What sort of day did you have? Chimney sweep came this morning, at last, and the electricity people this afternoon to put the stove right. Oh, that reminds me, dear. You said you'd fix the cistern in the bathroom this evening. Yes, dear. I'll do it after supper. Hello, Dad. Hello, Jenny. You're looking very posh. You're going somewhere tonight? Mm-hmm. Spec so. Have a good time, then. Why not do it now, dear? You've been promising me for days. It'll only take you ten minutes. And by that time, tea will be ready. Now then, you two. I'll go. Oh, it is you. Uh, good evening, Jenny. I'm sorry I'm a bit late. Oh, that's all right. I hardly knew whether you'd turn up at all. I thought you might have changed your mind and gone out with your glamour girl. Oh, no, I haven't seen her since the dance. She's wonderful, isn't she? It's a pity you won't be seeing her tonight. Oh, no, I don't mind. I, I think you're wonderful, too, in a different sort of way. Oh, thank you, Len. You know, what I like about you, Jenny, is you're so nice and ordinary. Well, let's go before you get carried away. No wonder that those Irish lads should feel so gay and frisky. For sure, St. Patrick taught them that, as well as making whiskey. No wonder that the saint himself should understand this, Dylan. For his mother kept a sheep in shop. 
in the town of Venice, Helen. <laughs> good, <laughs> good, good luck, good luck, Flash, good luck. <laughs> Perhaps first we should fool the police. Should the police only spoil a good fight? It's the angel. Where, uh, where you wanting somebody, miss? No, thank you. I was just passing and I, I couldn't resist coming in to look at my harp. How did you get in? I walked in. Where's your manners, Josh? Ask her through. Maybe she'd like a drop of Irish whiskey. Would you like to come through to the office? And Josh here will show you some of his musical boxes. That would be nice. Yes. Ah, he's got a wonderful collection. Took him 30 years to build it up. But if it wasn't for them, uh, he'd be a very lonely man. See, he lives here all alone, and uh, I don't think he's got many friends. He seems to have a good one in you. Well, I'm not here very often, but when I am, I try to get him out of his shell. Because what he really needs is a family and children. Here, hold that up to the light and turn the little screw. I think it's charming. Oh. I suppose you have trouble keeping the children out of here. Oh, they have their comics. If they want puppets, they look at the television. They don't want these. Have you asked them? What's the use? How can you be sure? Oh, they wouldn't trouble. Well, I must be going. Are you enjoying your holiday? Oh, yes. There you are. What did I tell you? Tomorrow I'm going to the dogs. And you lose the rest of my money. I haven't got much of it left to lose. What a wonderful looking harp. Do you play it at all? Oh, yes. Would you mind giving us a bit of a tune before you go? I'd like to. What an opportunity, Josh. A real angel playing celestial music. Not to mention the stupendous novelty of hearing us while we're still alive. I mean, it won't mean getting more money out of me. <laughs> Open. He's gone. Hello, Lenny me boy. Whatever happened? Oh, we we had a had a bit of a party. If you hadn't taken the harp, I must have been dreaming. You've been dreaming. You should have had mine. I dreamt I was looking up at the sign outside the pub, and there on the sign was Sally in place of the angel. She smiled at me, and then do you know what? Just as I thought she was going to ask me what I'd have to drink, she leant right out of the sign and gave me a smacking big kiss. Oh, it was gorgeous. I can still feel it. You know, I wonder if Sally can really kiss like that. I don't trust that girl. Who, Sally? Why ever not? No, no, the other one. I'm going to phone the police. 
Palm brokers. No imagination. I suppose you don't believe in angels either, Len. Angels, Mr. Sullivan, that's funny. There you go. You think they're funny, and your boss wants to have them arrested. No, no, no. What I meant was, I, I was just thinking, have you ever looked in a mirror, Mr. Sullivan? I mean, it's you, but it isn't you. You're not all there. Are you all right, Len? You're not sickening after something. And suddenly you meet someone, you think you begin to see what's missing. Huh. That reminds me. Breakfast. So long, Len. Take good care of yourself now. Say goodbye, Mr. Sullivan. Dear sir, I am going to the dogs. I must raise some money to redeem my heart, mustn't I? <laughs> What's the name of that one? Spider Flesh. I think he's very handsome. Hmm. I wouldn't say so if you owned him. He's never won a race yet and never will. Oh, poor dog. Poor dog? What about poor me? Well, this is his last chance. I'm sure he'll take it. I think he's a darling. Darling. <laughs> Six to four the field, I'll play this, baby. Six to four the field. Please, Lord, have five pounds on Spider-Flash. Spider-Flash, miss, what, to, to win? Oh, I don't want to put it on him to lose. I wouldn't waste your money, father, you, miss. I'm sure he'll win. He's such a nice dog. Besides, it really is his turn. Twenty-five of Spider-Flash, and the number's 303. Thank you, miss. That's all I have, so he must win, mustn't he? And it would come over me, but do you know that's the first time I've ever tried to stop anyone losing their money? And the last. And the last. <laughs> Miss. I don't know. How much 303? 105 pounds. You know, you're a very lucky girl, miss. There's 50. There's 75. There's 100. Do you know, miracles like this don't happen every day. I know. 105. Thank you very much. I do hope you've got enough left. Oh, it's all right, miss. We'll struggle along. Goodbye. Place number four, three shillings and seven. Four cards, four pounds, fifteen cents. Oi, miss! You dropped this one. How careless of me. Thank you so much. You ought to have let us in on Spider Flash. I would have if you'd asked me. She ought to be a little more careful with her money. Especially with suspicious characters like us around. Oh, I do hope you didn't hurt yourself. I remember you now. You're not still worried about my money. <coughs> you ought to do something about that cold. Well, you see, miss, we're not on the national health in our job. 
What a shame. What is your job? We were to my call relievers, miss. Only there's not much doing in that line nowadays. Well, in that case, you better have this. Thank you very much for looking after me. Good night. Charlie boy, we're getting past it. Friends in need are friends indeed. Perhaps I could find them some... What was it? Relieving to do. As for Len and Jenny, dear sir, everything's going swimmingly. I hope it's not going to be too much of a strain for you. Why on earth should it? Well, I mean, meeting Mother for the first time. Still, I suppose you've got to meet her sometime. Don't worry, I've met lots of mums in my time. Oh, hello, Len. So this is your girl. Well, Jenny, I'm glad to meet you at last. I've heard a lot about you. I met your father once in the mortuary after an inquest. Ah, oh, that's better, isn't it? Take the coat off, and we'll hang that up on the back of the door. And you sit over there next to Len, so we can have a really good look at you. Now, we'll take these and hang these up here, so that we won't forget them, and everything will be nice and tidy. When I was a little girl, one of the first things my mother taught me was always to hang my things up neatly. Mavis! They're here! How old does she think I am? Ten? That's right. Make yourself a tell, my dear. Your mother will be down in a moment, Len. Who on earth is she? It's Mrs. Trapp, the undertaker. Your poor mother had a headache, Len, so I got the tea for her. Well, sit down, both of you, and tuck in. There's a lot of good food to be eaten up. I thought cold meat would be nice. Personally, I'm always ready for it. You can help yourselves to anything else you want. It's all laid out ready for you. Thank you. Mum, this is Jenny. I'm very pleased to meet you. Len's told me a lot about you. I'm pleased to meet you, Mrs. Barrows. It was kind of you to ask me. Yes, I thought We both was... thought it was time we got to know something about you, didn't we, Mavis? Yes, but I didn't... Now, I... let's see, Jenny. You're 18, aren't you? Yes. Where do you work? I sell records in the music department at Hearts. I see. I know your father's alive. What about your mother? She's just about ticking over. You mean she's on the way out? No, I was joking. <laughs> <laughs> She's very well, really. Oh, I see. What else were we going to ask Jenny? If Mum wants to ask Jenny anything, she can do it herself, can't she? Don't you adopt that tone with me, young man. If you told your poor mother a bit more about your goings-on, she wouldn't have to ask any questions. Now, look here. <laughs> what's wrong, Mum? You know perfectly well what's wrong. Never mind, Mavis. You have a good crowd. Yeah, but I don't. What's the matter, Mum? I didn't expect to lose you so soon. Lose me? What do you mean? She's every right to be upset. You young people have no consideration for others. Never mind. We'll try and look on the bright side. If they decide to live here, Jenny will take a lot of work off your shoulders. So that's it. Len, have you been saying we're engaged? No, all he I said... certainly has. Your father, he never told me anything. But, Mum, I wouldn't dream of asking Jenny to marry me without telling you first. Oh, wouldn't you? Mind well, you, we don't take all that notice of what he says. He's always chasing after girls and making up their head over heels in love with him. Oh, oh is he? Well, but I don't go in for those kind of acrobatics. But may I come in? Oh, I suppose this is another of your fiancés. I was just passing, so I thought I'd drop in. And I'm dropping out. I really can't compete. You can have Cassin over here and keep him. Good night, all, and thanks for the supper. Jenny! Jenny, wait a moment, please. Would you mind taking your hand off me, Larry? I'll get really Jenny, angry. Jenny, all I told him was I love you. Let me go! I told him I love you. Don't you understand? I really let me go or not? I do, I swear. <laughs> Len, I am sorry. I seem to have arrived at completely the wrong moment. You certainly did. What can I do to put things right? Oh, it's not your worry. It's all Mrs. Trapp's fault. She's the one to blame. You'd be surprised at the difference in Mum when she's not about. 
That woman's a vampire. She's not larking about with the dead. She's tormenting the living. Can't you do something to stop her? What could I do? That's up to you. You can do anything if you try. Oh, don't lecture me. I've had enough of that for one day. What with Mrs. Trapp and Jenny and everything. Really kind of you to try and help me, but it's no good. Just go away and leave me alone. Oh, I'm sorry, that was rude. Rude of me. Dear sir, please disregard previous entry. I'm very worried. Things are not going swimmingly at all. But Len seems to be bearing up, and so must I. As your department always says, while there's life, there's hope. <laughs> Son. Oh, good morning, sir. Met your governor, Mr. Webber, in the pub the other evening. Said I'd pop in to have a deck over his musical instruments. Oh, yeah, I've sorted some things out for you. Ah, blowers and bangers are my main line. Brass and drums to you. We sell a lot of them to the Boy Scouts and church lads. I used to be a church lad. You did, eh? I used to be a brownie. Mr. Webman. Good morning, Mr. Parker. How much? Four pounds. It's almost new. Almost, eh? I see, time goes slower for you than it does for me. Four pounds. Thirty bob. Three pounds. <laughs> well, let's say thirty-five bob. Fifty-five. Forty. Forty-three. Forty-two. Sixpence. Done. Snares are rusty. Rusty, but look at the skins. You won't find skins like this today. How much? Pound each. Thirty bob the pair. Thirty-six. Thirty-two. Thirty-four. Thirty-three and sixpence. Ninepence. Sixpence. Done. Best about a bit, old man. It's a very good make. Take your word for it, never out of it. Five pounds. Throw in these, it's a deal. With the bugles is seven. Five ten. Six. Five fifteen. Nine pence. Penny for goodwill? Mm. Well, that's me lot. Now, what have I spent? Nine seven two. Nine eleven eight. Nine eleven eight seven two. Quite right, old man. Sorry. <laughs> well, that I enjoyed. Yes, me too. The people I deal with these days are a lot of mugs. No pleasure in it. But by Jiminy, you know the drill, all right. I'll write your check. Cash is more convenient, if you don't mind. Just as you like. Nine pounds. Five, four, nine, two, eleven, and eight. Nine pounds, eleven, and eight. Thank you. Will you take the instruments with you, Mr. Parker? No, thanks, son. I'll send round for them tomorrow. Well, cheerio, all. Good day, Mr. Parker. Good day, sir. Is this the harp you were telling me about? Yes, that's it. Hmm. Do you mind if I take a look? No, please. Well, I'm jiggered. Huh? Not an expert on harps. I think this is rather a good one. Worth a bit more than usual. How much more? Tell you what, take a gamble. Give you 30 quid for it. Oh, I can't sell it to you. It's in pawn. I'll be honest with you. You said you handed out 20 quid on it to a bit of fluff who didn't wait for a ticket. Uh. Listen, when she comes back, if she comes back, Tell her a bloke's offered to buy it, and you'll give her 30 quid for it. She'll jump at it. I'll give you 40, you make 10, everybody's satisfied. 60. 45. 55. 47. 50. It's a deal. Well, if she promised to come back on Saturday. So she did. Sorry, my friend, it's not a deal. I can't promise anything. All right, think it over. I'll be in the pub Saturday. See you all. Good day. He thinks I'm foolish, that Parker. That young lady with that harp of hers, she may have put me onto something good after all. Still Vane speaking? Uh, Mr. Webman here. Good morning, Mr. Webman. 
How's the collection? What can I do for you? I want to ask your opinion about a harp. I think maybe it's a good one, but I don't know about harps. I couldn't advise you without seeing it. No, no, of course not. Uh, please, when could you come? This afternoon? Well, I'm afraid that's impossible. I've got to go out of town today on urgent business. But uh, I'll ring you as soon as I return. Oh, Gav, there's some, something I wanted to ask you. Well, oh, what is it? Well, I was talking to a certain young lady. She said that I ought to ask you to come to the club one evening. Give us a talk about your musical boxes. Oh, do you think anyone would come? Oh, yeah. <laughs> well, then, boy, why not? Why not? Oh, thanks, Gav. I'll, I'll fix it up. Then I want you to cover this up. We've got to take great care of it. Mr. Stilvane's coming to value it. I don't want... No one should see it till he comes. No, I'll be back after lunch. We'll see how smart Mr. Parker is. I don't make much noise. What can I do for you? I've had a marvelous win on the dogs, so I've come to get my heart back. Oh, good. And, um, there's eight shillings for the interest, miss. Oh, yes, Mr. Webberman was very interested. <laughs> that would be sorry he missed you. He wanted to ask you to sell it to him. I told him I couldn't do that. No, of course. Then. Good morning, Sergeant Lane. Good morning, Miss. Good morning. Excuse me, Miss. Aren't you the young lady who called on Mr. Webman the other evening? Oh, yes, I am. Is this your harp? Yes. Lovely instrument. Bit hard to learn, I expect. Yes, but it's very rewarding. Have you been playing long? As long as I can remember. You must be rather good, then. Oh, yes, she is. Won't you give us a tune before you go? If you like. Bother. Mr. Webman's assistant speaking. Yes, Sergeant Lane, uh, station here. Oh, uh, yes, I'll get him. so beautiful since the heart passage from Scheherazade. That's lovely, isn't it? Do you know it? What about Faust? There's a lovely heart bit in that. Oh, yes. Of course, if you ask me, the best are not Swan Lake. Of course, the dancing's a bit much, but the music. <laughs> There's a Tchaikovsky program at the Festival Hall on Monday. Is there? Oh, I'd love to hear that. Would you? I've got two tickets. Would you like to come with me? Do you mean that? Of course. I'll meet you outside the main entrance at 10 to 7. Sergeant, uh, wanted on the phone. Excuse me. Uh, 
Hello, Taff Lane here. You asked me to check up on that girl Webman was talking about. Did you find anything on her? No, no, nothing about her in the rogues gallery. I'm glad to hear that. I've just seen her. She's a nice girl. If you ask me, Webman's crazy. Well, thanks, Taff. Goodbye. Ask Mr. Webman if he'd mind putting this in the window, will you? It's the uh, police benefit. Yeah, I'm sure he will. By the way, Len, you must come and have a look at it this time. Now, what am I going to do about that concert? You'll go all right, Mr. Lane. <laughs> Come on, old man. A bitch you've got behind my back and sold it to somebody else. You're wrong. I never do such things. Okay, old man, okay. So what matters me is how she carried the harp out of the shop. Probably had a boyfriend waiting outside to nip in and give her a hand with it. The long and the short of it is, she was an angel. <laughs> Oh, you may laugh if you like, but I'll always remember her. No, joke is, I believe that harp was a Canaro del Manda. And what's that when it's at home? Del Manda was the greatest maker of harps who ever lived. Oh, you mean like Stradivarius with the violins? That's right. There are only a few Del Mandas known to exist in the entire world. They say that Del Manda was the only mortal who ever made harps for angels. Ha-ha! Good selling point, eh? How much was it really worth? Now that it's gone. I don't mind telling you, it'll probably fetch 500 quid at least. Aye, aye, what I missed. And 50 pounds you offered me. Business is business. I probably would have given you a bit more in the end. But wouldn't you have kept your mouth shut if you'd been in my position? Maybe I would. Of course you would. I want to know which of you is the pot and which is the kettle. <laughs> By the way, I picked that up as I guess. You just for a lock? No. Right, nice. French, I should say. Does it work? Meant to start playing when you open the lid, but it doesn't. Pity. Yes. Want to make me an offer? Oh, I don't know. I got several like that. Still, it's a nice box. I might go to a pound. Two pound ten. One pound nineteen. Two pound seven. Two pound three. Four. No, my friend, it's not worth it. Two pound four, and I'll buy you another drink. Done. So we go, old man. Yes, thanks. Here, I've had enough. I think I'll have a whiskey. That's a bit underhand, old man. <laughs> <laughs> is it... Uh, is it a good one? It's a fun hard talk. Very, very rare. It isn't working at present, but I'll soon get that running. And then, my friend, you'll hear some of the most beautiful songs that ever came from a musical instrument. You're a terrible old card. Anyhow, I'm very glad of the chance to get these up. Nice surprise for your father. Mm-hmm. Looks as if he's got a surprise for you. What's that, Jenny? What's he up to, Jenny? I'd like to know what she's up to. Seems she's now trying to pinch other people's husbands. I don't understand. Hello, Mary. Hello, Jenny. Lovely evening. What's the matter with you two? Bum, 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 bum. Mm -hmm. Dick! Hmm? Who was that girl? Oh, just someone I met. Have you been out together? Yes, as a matter of fact, we have. We've been to the festival all together. She's very fond of music. Not the only thing she's fond of. Seems a bit queer to me. I mean, we've been married all these years. You take a young girl to a concert without saying a word to anybody. I mean, what's the idea? Oh, there's no idea, Mary. It's just that you're not very interested in concerts. How do you know I'm not? You've never even asked me. Oh, I'm sure I must have done. Well, if you did, it must have been a long time ago. Well, you always seem so busy with her home and Jenny and all that. Well, naturally I was. But Jenny's grown up now. What, do you mean I should have gone on asking you? Well, why not? Matter of fact, I'd love to go to a concert with you. Mary, do you, do you really mean that? Of course I do. That's fine. Now, listen, how about coming with me to the festival hall on Monday? 
Oh, I'm not sure about Monday, Dick. Oh, don't be silly, Mum. You know you'd love it. Of course I would. All right, Dick. Monday it is. Good. Charlie? Don't be humorous. Mommy, you skint to know. Got any ideas? <laughs> Silly question. Yeah, I know. We go to Uncle Webman's. He must have a packet stuck away in that safe. But we'd have to do him first, wouldn't we? You ought to stop reading them comics. But suppose he comes barging in. Cracking safes is noisy. Only for amateurs. You should have seen my old man. He just tickled him open. I didn't know you ever met him. I read about him in the police gazette. Coming. No good? No. I've tried everything I know. It ought to work, but it won't. It must be bewitched. It won't work. And so valuable, too. Where is Len with that jigger? Maybe it's the angel. Come back. There's no sign of a safe here. Yeah, I expect he keeps it in the office. Come on. So that's what you're after? Breaking an entry, what? Oh! Oh, me foot! Help! Here, you shut your gun. Now then, show us where your safe is. He must be in the back. You take him through. I'll see if he'll be out of one. Get it here. Get on it here. Go on here. Come on, get it. Shut up. <laughs> Come on. Stick him up. Stop him. Stop him. Are you? Don't lay down on it. Stop him. Ooh.
hello. Oh, it is nice to see you again. That's a very good likeness of you. Do you think so? I don't think it's like me at all, somehow. You know, I never thought I'd do a thing like that. That's just what I mean. You were brave the other night. Matter of fact, I was scared stiff. That's why you were so brave. I think you could tackle anything now. Even Mrs. Trapp. Oh, I don't know. unless I'm asked, but I haven't spent all these years in the business without knowing something about it. <laughs> you ought to take care of that cough, Mavis. You know you haven't been looking at all well lately. I'm all right. Really, I am. Well, I hope so. We don't want you taken before your time, do we? So I said to her, it's all very well, I said, but if you only want something about so high, then you don't want a cherub at all. What you want is something much smaller. What are you doing? I'm turning you out. What do you mean? I've never been now so... shut up! Don't you dare tell me to... Shut just... up! This time you're going to stop talking and listen to me for a change. I'm fed up to the back teeth with finding you here every time I come home. I'm sick of your damned interference. And I'm sick of your talk of graves and coffins and corpses. I don't want to catch you inside this house ever again. Well, I'm certainly not going to stay here to be insulted. That's right. I've finished and you're going. Well, unless I get an apology, I'll never set foot inside this house again as long as I live. Never. Len, how could you speak to her like that? I'm sorry, Mum, but I've been wanting to say that for a long time. You know, it's a funny thing, but now she's gone, I think I have been, too. We're just after the concert, dear. OK, Mum. Have a good time. I thought Old Webman was giving his lecture this evening. He is. Aren't you going? Well, I feel I can't really, Dad. You see, Len will be there, and I was so mean to him the other evening. I go. No, I think I'll stay at home tonight. I like your new suit, Mum. Just what I was saying. Now, come on, dear, we're going to be late. Bye-bye, <sighs> Jenny. Goodbye, love. Bye. Oh, isn't she silly, dear sir? But I can't stop now. I have an appointment. Oh, shut up. Shut up! Shut up! Well, before I bring Mr. Webman on, there's just one or two things I'd like to tell you. And I feel terrible. It will be no good, I know. Why ever not? Well, how will they understand me? Listen. James Drysdale's spring barreled finish Lombardo's regulating gear. Oil reach rectifier for cylinder pinion side chick. May I see? You think they will? No. What are you doing? I can't carry all that in my head. Never mind. Don't bother about what's in your head. Just tell them what's in your heart. I'm going to bring Mr. Webman on now. And I'm sure he's going to give us one of the best lectures we've had for ages. Mr. Webman, you're on. Oh. Would you like me to go on with you? Oh, please. Talk his head off as long as I can sit here and watch that dame. Boys and girls, for this welcome, I thank you. I. Now, I want you to imagine that we, you and I, are in one of those time ships. 
You know, like in those magazines which Len is reading, and when he's not catching burglars. <laughs> now, we are going to travel back through the years to visit many countries and to listen to many peoples. You'll say, how will we understand them? We don't talk their language. Well, I'll tell you. They have one language which everybody can understand. It is the language of music. And they put it into these boxes. And the wonderful thing is that these men did everything themselves. They found the tunes. They made the works to play the tunes. Even the boxes they made. And the figures and all the things that move. Now, we have gone back to more than a thousand years. We are in the middle of the jungle. A tribe of cannibals sit waiting, silent. They are waiting for it to speak. And presently, when the sun has gone down and the cold night breeze begins, it will speak. Listen. beautiful concert hall and we and other fine ladies and gentlemen <laughs> are listening to a new symphony by a composer called Beethoven. Thank you, boys and girls. Thank you for listening to me. I said thank you. Isn't it wonderful? He's so happy. Yes. What's the matter? Oh, I'm a bit disappointed, that's all. Well, I hope Jenny might be here. So I thought a lot about the other night when we had the row. I've come to the conclusion my only fault was I hadn't asked her to marry me. I'll throw Mrs. Trapp out. Mum's all right. You wouldn't have to live with her in any case. Len, why don't you say this to Jenny? What do you mean, go around and tell her? Why not? I've given up gambling, but, but I bet she's waiting for you. Jenny, I've got something to tell you. Jenny, I've turned Mrs. Trapp out. Mum's all right. Jenny, will you... Will you come out with me again? If you want me to. Tomorrow? If you like. What would you like to do? Swimming. I'm, um, 
I'm almost good at that, Lark. I'll teach you. Okay. Jenny, I do love you. Do you mind? Why should I, then? No, Josh, I don't believe it. You should have made up your mind at last. Eh? To your family. What family? I have now a large family, and they're all interested in my boxes. Uh, they've made themselves a society. It's called the... the what's it called? The Angel Music Boxidists. Yes, that's it. The Angel Music Boxidists. In a day or two, I send you the details. Good day to you, Arthur. Well, boys, I'll see you tomorrow, then. Goodbye, Mr. Goodbye, Webber. Goodbye, Mr. Webber. Goodbye. I duly received your signal, dear sir, about reporting back. But before I go, there's one terribly important thing I must tidy up. But how? How? Could I have those gramophone records, please, Gov? I'll tell Sergeant Lane about them. He said he'd look in this morning. All right, I'll come and get them for you. But, Lane, don't give them for nothing, just because he's Jenny's father. Hello, my dear. Oh, hello. Mr. Webman, I've come to throw myself on your mercy. On my mercy? What can I do for you? Something awkward's happened that I must put right before I go. I've had bad luck on the dogs. I just couldn't bring off another win like Spider Flash, however hard I tried. The bookmaker was so kind. He told me of a way that I was sure to win in the long run. Whenever I lost, all I had to do was double my stake. But I just kept on losing. He was so worried that he let me bet on credit. But even that was no use. How much did you need? 250 pounds. 250 pounds? Do you know when you will be coming back? Do you know that? No, I don't. Well, now, if you wanted to sell your heart, I might... No, no, I couldn't do that. Besides, it can't be worth all that. There are hundreds of them where I come from. Now listen, if you're really in trouble for the heart, I will give you the 250 pounds. How kind you are. I wish I could do it. Well, I might go to 300, but that's all I got. I suppose I could get another half, eventually. All right, 300 pounds. It's a bargain. Now, you mind I give you a bit of advice? No. If you're losing, don't double your stakes. Go home. I write you a check. Cash would be more convenient, if you don't mind. Hello. 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 You're just in time to say goodbye. I've enjoyed meeting you all so much, and I hope one day we'll meet again. Well, I hope so, too. I'm sorry you're going, and thanks for your advice. Here you are. One hundred, two, three. Oh, thank you. You're so kind. I only wish that I could do something for you before I go. Oh, you've done quite enough already, one way or another. Bless you. Goodbye. 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 Hello. Goodbye. Good morning, Mr. Stilley. Good morning. Ah, oh, the hot dog. Does it work? No. I've tried and tried, but for me, it won't sing. Hmm. Pity. I'd have given 300 for it any time. Is that the harp? Yes, that's it. Ah. What do you think of it? Hmm. Hello, hello, hello. What's going on here? Yes, it's a Del Mendo, right enough. How much did you pay for it? 300. 300 pounds? Have you any idea of its real value? About 15 pounds at the very outside. What? I don't believe it. Oh, well, it must be some mistake. She'd never do a thing like that. Domain de Harps are fairly uncommon.
but they are not particularly valuable. Mr. Webman, what made you think it was worth so much? A man named Parker. He at once told me it was valuable. I met him in the pub a few hours after she brought it here. He must have been in league with her. You've been the victim of a confidence trick. P Parker and our angel? Nonsense. It was pure coincidence meeting him in the first place. Well, they can be very clever at making a first meeting look like a coincidence. I know it's very sad, but it's clear enough for me, Mr. Sullivan. I've seen it all before. So we've all been tricked. And there was I, thinking that only an angel could be so knowing and so innocent. I believed in her with all my heart. Well, don't you still? Thirty-five years in the business, and I am made into a fool by a cut. You seem remarkably pleased with yourself. Oh, haven't I done what you wanted me to? Unofficially, I think you've done your best. Though I don't know what the head of the department will say. Do you think I've created a legend, like the other angel? The other angel didn't leave her heart behind. But I couldn't help it. It wasn't my fault. You see, I just... That had... will be decided by higher authority. Oh, dear. I'm in trouble again. Yeah. 